Hallelujah, hallelujah. Blessed afternoon, church. Are you happy to be in the presence of God this day? Hallelujah. Wherever you are, I just want you to lift up your hands and begin to thank God for today. Thank God for his, for your life. Thank God for your loved ones. Thank God for your family. Thank God for the job he has granted you. Thank God for his favor. Begin to thank God. Begin to thank God. Begin to thank God. Give him the glory. Begin Give him the glory. Give him the glory. Father, there is no one like you. We celebrate you this day. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be glorified. We thank you for the gift of life, O oh God, for the provisions. We thank you, O oh God, for the spiritual life. For you have opened our eyes to see. You have opened our ears to hear you, O oh God. Thank you, O oh God, for your presence that is in us. Thank you, Father, for you have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly place in Christ. Hallelujah. Thank him for today. Thank him for the word because the entrance of the word of God brings light and it brings understanding unto the simple. Hallelujah. Thank God, thank God for his word today. Thank God for his word in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, because as I receive your word today, O oh God, I thank you because I will never be the same again. I will have understanding in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Begin to rebuke any voice that is not of God. Begin to silence any voice of the enemy in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we refuse to hear any voice contrary to yours. We silence the voice of the flesh. We silence the voice of the enemy in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Glorify yourself even today, Father. We commit everyone under the sound of the Holy Spirit right now. Every viewer, wherever they are, by the power of the Holy Ghost. We declare that nobody shall be passed by today in the name of Jesus Christ. Your word that is sharper than any two edges were piercing even to the dividing asunder from soul to spirit. Oh God, Lord, we pray may he pierce into our hearts today and begin to, to, to discern, oh God, oh God, discern every thought and give you glory in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray for you, you are a consuming fire, begin to consume, oh God, as your word is moving forth because you said you are, you are already cleansed by this word that I have spoken to you. Let the power of the word of God begin to flow even as we speak right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Begin to assign angels now, angels move wherever they are, move north, south, east, angel in charge of healing, deliverance, move right now. We release angels right Right now in your direction wherever you are by the power of the Holy Ghost in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and just begin to minister right now begin to minister right now begin to minister right now by the power of the Holy Ghost in the mighty name of Jesus Christ we declare signs and wonders in Jesus name thank you father I hide myself behind the cross of God may you alone be heard may you alone be glorified speak to me and speak through me oh God may I not be heard and may all glory be given back to you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 What a privilege. Glory to God. It's always a privilege to speak to God's children. We thank God for giving us another opportunity that we might give Him the glory. Hallelujah. Are you blessed to be in the presence of God? Can you can you greet you? Anyone by your right, anyone by your left, and tell them today God is speaking to you. Tell the person today. God is speaking to you. And then tell yourself, today, God is speaking to me. Today, God is speaking to me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. We have, uh, we have been going through a lot of scriptures in the Bible. And we know, we know so many stories in the Bible. And the story we are going to see today is not going to be too different from what we have heard before. But I want you to know, that a learning spirit is a spirit that is willing to listen to the end listen and be blessed amen we shall be taking our reading from the the book of luke are you there we are going to read from the book of luke amen are you there so the book of luke chapter 15 luke chapter 15 from verse 11 to 32 Luke chapter 15 from verse 11 to 32. Amen. Shall we read? And he said, this was Jesus Christ speaking, a certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portions of good that followed to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after, 
the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substances with riotous living. A riotous living means a rough living. And when he had spent all, there, are, there arose a mighty famine in that land and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country and he sent him into his field to feed swine and he would fain have filled his belly with the hawks that the swine did eat and no man gave unto him and when he came to himself he said how many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare and i perish with hunger i will arise and go to my father and i will say unto him father i have sinned against heaven and before thee i and i am no more worthy to be called thy son make me as one of thy hired servants and he arose and came to his father but when he was yet a great way off his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him and the son said unto him father i have sinned against heaven and in thy son and am no more worthy to be called thy son but the father said to his servants bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry for this my son was dead and is alive again he was lost and is found and they began to be merry amen now his elder son was in the field and his, as he came and drew night to the house he heard music down dan and dancing and he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant meant and he said unto him thy brother is come and thy father has killed the fatted, fatted calf because he had received him safe and sound and he said and he was angry and would not go in therefore came his father out and entreated him and he ans he and he answering said to his father lo these many years do i serve thee neither transgress i at any time thy commandment and yet thou never gavest me a kid that i make merry with my friends but as soon as thy son was come which had devoured thy living with harlots thou hast killed for him the fattest calf and he said unto him son thou art ever with me and all that i have is thine it was me that we should make merry and be glad for this thy brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found again hallelujah glory to god today we shall be speaking on the topic how far have you gone can you tell your neighbor or the person next to you or tell yourself how far have you gone how far have i gone amen the question is how far have you gone where but we are going to go through the scripture so that we can understand the bible tells us that there is a way which seems right unto a man but the end thereof are the ways of death do you know this this is a par imagine a palace with two sons okay and one of the son the father is very wealthy there's a palace where the father is very wealthy and one of the sons decides to go and enjoy himself and make merry and ask for all the money or, or let me say his own inheritance is part of the the inheritance so and he went and squandered the money and everything now i want you not to be literal to this story that is what the story is saying that is what the story is saying when you look at this story you need to bring it now to yourself god has given us everything 
The Bible says all things that we have is given to us by the Lord. Now, it's the same as what that son received of the Father. The Father here being God for you. God has given you peace. God has given you time. He has given you money. He has given you everything that you need. The question is, how far have you gone? What way have you gone? What have you done? What are the things you have done? And with everything that God has given you, if you are standing today to reflect and to look at your life, what account will you say? What will you tell God? I am not here to tell you to feel bad about yourself. We are not here to make you to be and to, to just to just be crushing your spirit. It's not about that. It's about us coming to the realization, to the knowing of what we have. Amen. Now, the Bible makes us to understand that there is a way which seems right unto a man. But the end, the end leads to destruction. The end of it thereof leads to death. What are, what are we trying to say? What we are trying to say is this. This son, he when, when he got all those things, the inheritance from the father, he saw only the goodness or the joy or the enjoyment out of it. He saw that he is doing something good. He saw, he saw that he is living life, as many say. You know, in what you are doing, I am not here to name what you are doing. You know what you are doing. In what you are doing, you marry, it, it makes you happy. It makes you glad. And you know that you are living life. But I want to tell you something. Before he left the father, he was alive and he was living. Before he left the palace, which is the kingdom, he was alive and he was married. Before you were in Christ, before you were so much prayerful, before you were so much into the word of God, before you were so much into prayers, you always attended every Bible study. You always attended every prayer meeting. You were always present. And God gave you the availability. He gave you time. He gave you availability. How far have you gone? How far have you gone? Are you still the same today? Are you still praying that much? Are you still studying your word that much? Are you still attending every prayer meeting, every Bible study that much? What happened? How far have you gone? We are looking at, at, at this child. We are looking at him as if he left the father. The point is, there is a distance. There is a shift. There is a move. And that son moved away from the father. That's where that title comes. How far have you gone? I want you to reflect in your life. And since that we are not meeting in church, since we are not meeting together, because the Bible says how good and how pleasant it is for brethren, to join together in harmony. I want you to know that we are spirit beings. So even as we gather now, we are still in the spirit together. We are united. And keep the bond. Keep keep the bond. And that is what makes the spirit to be alive. But are you still meeting? Are you still coming online on every Bible study? At every prayer meeting? How far have you gone? That is the question. Amen. I'm not going to, 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 to close here. I want us to see as some men in the Bible. There are men in the Bible who went astray and they came back. And there are some who was and there are some who went and they never came back or they never found their way back or they never returned. And the reason is because they never knew God in reality. I want us to look at, for example, the story of uh, of Saul. For those who have ever uh, heard of the story of Saul, if you want, you can go to the book. Uh, you can we can go through the Bible and study about uh, the story of 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 Saul. 
Now, what does the Bible say about Saul? Saul was the first king of Israel, okay? I just want to go brief because of time. Saul was the first king of Israel and in those days there was a prophet which was like the prophet to the kingdom. He was Samuel. Now, the first thing is God um, Samuel told Saul that he should wait until he comes and does the sacrifice before they go to battle because he was supposed to offer sacrifice to God before they go to battle and what happens is uh, Samuel told Saul I was going to come in seven days and after seven on the seventh day Samuel did not show up but Saul was impatient he couldn't wait because he was afraid like maybe the enemy will come and cause and so he had his own reason but the instruction was he should not he should wait on Samuel and what he did was he went ahead and offered a sacrifice and listen when when he was asked why did you do this why did you offer the sacrifice do you know what Saul answered? And what did Saul reply? But Samuel came and said, What have you done? I want you to go to the book of Samuel. Are you there? 13, 1 Samuel chapter 13. What did what did Saul answer? Saul answer. Because Samuel asked, What have you done? And Saul replied, When I saw the men were scattering and that you did not come at a set time and that the philistines the philistines were assembling at mishmah i thought now the philistines will come down against me at giga and i have not sought the lord the lord's favor so i i felt compelled to offer the bond the burnt offering you acted foolishly samuel told him you have not kept the command of the lord the lord god gave you if you had he will establish your kingdom over Israel for all the time or forever. Amen. Now listen, I want you to take note of something. It is an instruction given to Saul. Wait for me to come and offer the bond offering. Which means, just as God gives us instruction, God gives us commandment. You did not, that's why Samuel told him, you did not obey the commandment of the Lord. What God asks you to do, you didn't follow, you did not obey what God asks you to do. Now listen. The response of Saul was justifying him. He was trying to justify himself. He was covering for the mistake he did. Saul did not how will i put it he did not like accept within him that he has done wrong instead he was defending himself are we there amen we are going to to look at another instance again Saul. okay there was another instance where are we there are we together god asks them to go to war against the Amalekites and there was an order that God gave to Moses in the book of Deuteronomy that when the Lord your God has given you rest from all your enemy and on every hand in the land that the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance to possess that is the book of Deuteronomy chapter 25 verse 19 he said you shall blot out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven do not forget this again was a command and an instruction that god gave them now when they went to battle this is king saul going to battle against amalek and the instruction was they should utterly destroy completely destroy now you should open the book of first samuel chapter 15. let's read from verse 20. what is so said to Samuel, Yeah, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord and have gone the way which the Lord sent me and have brought Agag 
the king of Amalek, and have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. Listen, he is saying he brought Agak, the king of Amalek, but he has, he is saying he has destroy, utterly destroyed the Amalekites, but he brought the king. Now, listen, he was giving an instruction to destroy everyone, kill everyone. He wasn't, a, he wasn't told, keep the king or keep the, 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 the maiden or whatever. Utterly destroy everything. And when they asked him, when Samuel said, what am I hearing? I'm hearing the sound of sheep and everything. And he kept the good, the good sheep and everything. And he kept the king, Agag. He is saying, no, he, he, he obeyed. Look at, look at what he's saying. He obeyed, but he did not obey. He actually did according to his own mind. What he thought. And again, he's giving again a response defending himself he doesn't accept the truth because he doesn't have the truth and because he doesn't know God and he doesn't know the truth what am I trying to say you may be here and God is speaking to you and God is telling you enough enough with that life you may be hiding from God sorry you may be hiding from the pastor pastor John you may be hiding from Pastor Rico. You may be hiding from Pastor Alalen or for every other pastor or man of God. You may be even hiding from all the church or even hiding from people around you. But I want to tell you something. You are not hidden from God. You are not hidden from God. Because God sees what are you doing. But God is not yet to tell you you are condemned. God is not here to tell you it's over for you. God is here to tell you, my son, how far have you gone? No matter how far you have gone, I still want you to come back. I still want you to realize yourself just as the son in, this, in, the, in, the, in the story we read in the text. He realized himself, oh, what have I done? And he said, look at, in my father's house, I had peace. I was more peaceful. I was not having all this stress because my father would say, don't worry about anything. But in everything with prayer and supplication, let your, let your request be made known unto the Lord. Hallelujah. That son came. Are you, are you, are you fighting against, against what? Maybe, maybe, are you fighting against uh, adultery or fornication? Are you fighting against that? I want to tell you something. You cannot do that on your own. That son knew he could not survive unless he comes back to the father. It doesn't matter how far you have gone. Maybe you have gone to drugs. Maybe you have gone so deep that you don't even know. You can't know. You don't know how to stop. You don't know how to come back. See, it doesn't matter how far you have gone. What is important is that you take the decision as the son. Take that decision as the son. Let me go back to my father. Let me go back to my father. You just have to make your mind set, make up your mind to come back to the father. That's all. That is all you have to do. You just have to decide, take that decision. I am coming back to my father. I am going back to my father. I don't know what you have gone through. It may be you are falling into sin. It doesn't matter the sin. You may have lied. You may have stolen. Those are serious. But you have discovered that over the time you keep lying. You started with one lie telling and it keeps growing. I'm not here to name things. I'm not here to tell you. See, you know what is wrong and what is bad. You know it. You may have been wicked to somebody. And it turns out that you keep on doing the same act over and over. And you don't know what is happening to you. You look at your life. It's like. It's like you are a different person. From what you you actually are before you know that you were you were not doing these things before you know that these things are, 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 are like this they are new to you it's like no i wasn't like this before that is how the son realized himself he came to the point of 
realization. He said, no. In my father's house, we even, even, even a servant don't eat these kind of things. So what is he trying to say? No, when I was with my father, I wasn't this bad. I wasn't doing this kind of things before. Something is wrong somewhere. Yes, I made his mistake. He acknowledged the fact that he has gone astray. He acknowledged the fact that what, how far he has gone into sin. How far he has gone away from God. And he didn't, he didn't say, no, there is no way for me to come back. What I'm trying to tell you is this. There is always hope for the living. If you are still alive listening to me right now, there is hope for you. You just have to come back make up your mind to come back to the father there is hope for you i don't know if you rape someone and you think that you have done the worst thing ever i don't know if you if you if you killed someone and you think you have done the worst thing over i want you to know something sin is sin whether you have just lied and you have killed is equal it is sin s i n it is the same and the wages of sin is dead. Death. So, if you kill, you will die. If you lie, you also die. It's the same payment. But now, there is a way that seems right unto a man. Listen, you have come to a point where it's like a lifetime is like normal to you. You are different now. It's, not, it's like it's part of your life now to do whatsoever you want to do. You are flirting with ladies over and over, sleeping with this one today, tomorrow. You, 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 will, you will promise ladies marriage and then you change. Once you, you sleep with them, you change and you get another one. And then again, you promise marriage and then you break again. And then you could so that you, you use strategies upon strategies. It doesn't matter even if you have been that way. I am here to tell you. You just have to come to the point of realization. Make up your mind. That I want, I'm coming back to the Father. Make up your mind that I am coming back to the Father. Saul, don't be like Saul. Saul, which we just read, he always had an excuse and that is what is happening. See, don't take that excuse and say, no, now I cannot do that. It may be you are, you are, you are, you are a gay or you are a lesbian. And you were not like this before. Maybe you find yourself in the middle of lesbian and you started practicing lesbianism. It doesn't, it doesn't mean that because you have been into that, what will people say if they find out? It's not about people. It's about you. It's about you coming to the point where what do you really want? Do you want to be with the Father? Do you want to come back? It's not too late as long as you are alive. Come back to the Father. I'm here, I'm speaking to you. It doesn't matter if you have been in occultism and you regret ever taking that decision. But you say, no, I have already given my soul to the devil. I want to tell you something. The Bible say, a live dog, a live dog or a living dog is better than a dead lion. What am I trying to say? <laughs> what I'm trying to say is this. It doesn't matter how filthy you are if you are still alive. <laughs> You are better than someone who is already dead. Because for what the death, there's no more redemption. They are dead. But unto you that I'm speaking to, it doesn't matter how far you have gone. How far, how ugly the situation may look. You are making you have committed abortions. And not once. You did it once and you it succeeded and you said, it's okay, I will be doing. And you took it as a lifestyle. I want to tell you something. You just have to make the decision to come back to the Father. Just make that decision that I'm coming back to the Father. I am returning to God. Just like this son. He made up his mind. And said, no, I have to tell my Father that I have seen. And I will go back to the Father. I'm going to... We are going to look at another person in the Bible because we are speaking about men in the Bible, okay? We are going to look at that and about another person. Let's look at David. We spoke about Saul. Saul was the first king of Israel. Let's look at David, the second king of Israel. Let's not go too far. In the book of 2 Samuel chapter 11, David committed adultery with Bathsheba. David is a king. He is well known. Listen, David 
is a man is a, is a is a man of influence authority do you know do you know that some people actually some people tend to do evil not actually because they really wanted to do that is because actually sometimes when they are given power and when they have power and they have authority they think they have all that it takes to do whatever they want so sometimes this power and authority influence them in their decisions so david came to a point where he committed adultery with Bathsheba and after he that he did that listen listen it starts always small you may have you never knew that you were going to get to this point but it started small and to everyone listening to me it doesn't matter how small you look at that sin don't let it grow because if you allow it it will take space and it will conquer you it doesn't matter if you lied once please renounce denounce it and get out of it immediately don't allow it to take more ground of you now when david committed adultery with bathsheba david now he thought that was all and then he he heard she's pregnant listen she's pregnant and david now knows no for david in his mind no if i committed uh, if i if i abort the child is not good okay the only way is the husband should not be mad okay let's do it away let's make sure that the husband should not be mad let's call the husband to come and sleep with the wife so that he will think that he's the one who got the wife pregnant david tried like that it didn't succeed which means david started trick like devising things in his mind just to cover his sins up what am i trying to say it doesn't don't try to justify that act don't justify it don't say because i am a christian god will forgive me no don't justify it god forgives everyone i want to tell you something it's not about because you are a christian the bible says god so loved the world it's not about you being a christian god loved the world and that's why anyone that comes to christ is forgiven of god so it's not because they are christian that they are forgiven is everyone that accept christ is forgiven now don't give yourself a reason to that act and begin to devise imagine things in your mind and know uh, i did it because i had no choice no listen you had the choice to do it and not to do it but you did it the point is that you did it that is why we are and now that you did it are you going to keep on doing it or are you going to come back to the father that's the point is is still a choice which you have to make up your mind that day he started devising evil things in his mind the evil ideas why because he came to the point where he saw that there is no return like he didn't see how he could get about this situation so he started thinking of every e- e- evil idea he could then the idea he took next was they should put the husband of the wife on the front line because he was a warrior so that he should be killed when he's killed david will take the wife now and make her his own and nobody will have anything to say and prophet came and spoke to david in parable and gave him a parable and he said and when he told him the parable i will just cut you short because of time when he told him the parable david said who is that man this man needs to be punished and the prophet told him you are the man now listen david had no idea that he was doing all of this and god took note because he he covered the sin he was thinking he was covering it from everyone but he actually did not cover it from god listen to me i am not here to tell you to tell to tell the person next to you Oh I have done this I have done this no I am here to tell you to speak to the father to make up your mind to come back to the father and speak to the father alone the father this is how far I have gone I have gone that is why we are speaking about how far have you gone it doesn't matter how far you have gone just speak to the father now father look at me I wasn't like this before 
I was not a thief. But now I'm stealing from left and right. Father, I was not, I, I have never committed abortion before when I was in Christ. When I was, I started the church. But now look at me, I've already committed two abortions. Speak to God. God wants to hear you. God wants you to pour your heart to him. Speak to him. And do you know one thing I want to tell you is, his arms are open wide. They are not closed. They are open wide. And David, immediately the prophet God spoke to, to David. You know what David said? Oh, I have sinned against the Lord. I want you to see the difference between David and Saul. The moment the word of God came to David, David repented. But the moment the word of God came to Saul, Saul defended himself. I don't know what you are, when I'm talking right now, what, what are the ideas that the enemy is giving you? He's, re, he's resisting the word. The Bible say, if you hear this word, do not harden your heart. That is what we mean by harden the, the what, that is what we mean by a hardened heart. A heart that gives reason, that takes excuses to the word, that is trying to cover the word with their own mindset. And that mindset is not of God, it's the devil. If you are listening to me right now, open your word, open your heart and accept the word right now. God is speaking to you. You were not a drunkard before. But how far have you gone? You started with just one bottle. Because friends said, just take it, just take it. And you started with one. Now you are an expert. And you are even better than you are even better than those people that brought you into it. You even show them how to do it. Same with smoking. Some people, I'm not here to tell you this, this, this is sin or what. I'm just saying. These habits were not in you before. These habits were not in you before. But you have changed. How far have you gone? They were not in you before. Amen. David again. Let's talk again about David. David, in the book of... Uh, we are going again in the, in the same book of Second Samuel, chapter 24. David numbered the people of Israel. Now, God said in the book of Genesis that the people of Israel shall be like the son of the seashore at the seashore, which means that cannot be numbered. Now, if you see very well, most often they will not number everybody in the camp. They would not number the Levites. That's why the exact number of the children of Israel was never given. The one they gave was from other tribes. They would never, they would not count or number the Levites. They were keeping some tribes out of the numbering. Now, but there was, there were, there, there, there were, there were some numberings that were done before. They numbered before. But now, in the book of 2 Samuel chapter 24, the Bible says that David numbered. He numbered the people. And when he asked Josh to go and number the people, Josh asked him, but why does my Lord want to number? Josh tried to convince David. But David had said, no, 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 I want to know. Then David, they went ahead and they numbered. Then after they have numbered, do you know what happened? David said in the verse 10, you're going to read 2 Samuel Verse, uh, chapter 24 verse 10 David said and David has was troubled the Bible says sorry and David has was troubled or David had troubled him after he had numbered the people so he said to the Lord I have sinned but now I beg you O Lord take away the sin of your servant for I have acted like a fool now listen immediately David come to the knowing of the fact that he has seen immediately david acknowledges that he has seen what david does is he immediately acknowledge accept humble himself that's what the bible says if the people that are called by my name shall do what humble themselves seek my face pray and I, the Lord, will do what? I will have mercy upon them. I will deliver them. I will heal them. The point is this. 
Is your heart hardened with pride? That you are right in everything that you do? You think you are always right? You think what you are doing is completely perfect? I want to tell you, the Bible says in Proverbs that the fool, the fool knows that he's always right in his own eyes. The fool is always right in his own eyes. If you don't know that, that is what the Bible says. In his own eyes, he thinks he's always right. There are many other people in the Bible. We can talk about Samson with Delilah. We can talk about Peter. We can talk about Saul who went to Paul. Samson, for example. Samson, when he has discovered because his hair, he was never to touch the hair. But when it came to the point where Delilah has cut his hair, Samson went back to God and said, God, just one more chance. Samson did not go away. He did not say, now that my hair has been cut, or is done for me now that i have seen now that i have fornicated it is finished for me i never knew i will ever fornicate as a child of god i never knew that i will i will lie as a child of god i never knew that i will steal as a child of god but now that i have stolen it is finished for me i am no longer a child of god samson didn't say that samson went back to god he came back peter also peter when they call crowd remember they call crowd thrice it means Peter lied three times. It doesn't matter how far you have gone. But it's about you coming back to the Father. <laughs> Peter lied three times. He denied. No, he didn't only lie. Because if I say lie, it would just be like lies. Then he denied Christ. He denied Christ. Remember, Christ said, If you deny me before men on earth, I will deny you also before my Father in heaven. But Peter, after doing that, he didn't give up. He came back to God. Do you think it is the worst thing you have ever done? Do you think you, you did the worst thing ever? Do you think that you, you, actually, you actually messed up completely? Yes, it may be you messed up completely. But don't go far away from God. God's arms are open wide. Come back to the Father. It doesn't matter how far you have gone. Come back to the Father. Come back. I'm speaking to you, brother. I'm speaking to you, sister. I'm speaking to you, mommy. I'm speaking to you, daddy. Yes. You may have abandoned your children for long. And you think that is I am the worst person ever. Yes. It's true. The Bible says that he who does not take care of his family. Is worse than a non-believer and has denied the faith. But I want to tell you, the moment you realize that you have done that, if you don't go back, there is nothing that is going to change. But if you decide that it's time for me to come back, you can come back to God and everything will be all right. Amen. When we look at the Bible, we see all these men of God we see all of them or most of them they came back all of them has fallen even Abraham failed listen every man of God even in the Bible failed in one way or the other but though they failed they never ran away from God but they came back they came to God because see there is no way anyone else can cleanse you no way anyone else can forgive you because only the Son of Man has the power to forgive sins. So come back to God. Because only you, only Him, only God can make you whole. Only God can clean you. Only God can sanctify you. Only God. Don't go far away from God. Today I'm inviting you, no matter where or no matter how far you have gone or wherever you are in this ship, no matter Yes, forgive me for saying that word, but it doesn't matter how he looks ugly, how ugly he looks like. But I'm here to tell you, you may have messed up yourself for the sake of money and you have gone so deep in it because of money you have done ugly things. You have just... I'm just telling you, it doesn't matter. I don't want to mention the things because you know, because you are looking for money. 
you gave you gave away your your your, 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 your yourself to men or to, to women just because you want money just because you want money that's why the bible said the money is the roots of all evil but it doesn't matter now that you are listening to the voice of god right now there is still hope don't give up come back to god don't give up come back to god it may be that you you have been someone who always mocked at people who always gossip you have been gossiping until you have destroyed marriages you have gossip until you have destroyed relationship friendship you have gossip until you have you have made people to be sacked out of work because you have spoken evil about people you kept giving wrong testimony behind the scene you kept destroying the image of people like the legs that rush to go and give evil report and you have made many people to lose their job lose their joy lose their their way of survival you have been a cause to many division whatever i'm speaking to you it doesn't matter how far you have gone but still come back to the father come back to the father you may be a cause of fighting you may be the one that has been been a, a, the cause of fighting in families the reason why many people are fighting the cause of people or, or, or hating each other it doesn't matter please come back to god just acknowledge the fact and speak to the father amen what does the bible teach us the bible says in the book of proverbs 24 verse 24 to 25 he says he that said unto the wicked thou art righteous him shall the people curse nations shall abhor him but to them that rebuke him shall be the light and a good blessing shall come upon them it doesn't matter how much good you do no one is good except god i want you to take note of that no one is good except god you may be thinking that I am a good person and a good person, but you know what you are doing, which is ugly. You may be even giving all your world to the poor. And you know that the way you acquire the world is a very bad way. But I'm calling you, I'm telling you, come back to God. God has not forsaken you. I wanted to read the book of Psalms 51. The book of Psalms 51 verse 17. Shall we read it? In the New King James Version. NKGV. NKJV. Can you read it? What did the Bible say? The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. A broken and a contrite heart. These, O oh God, you will not despise. What, 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 is, what is David saying? He's saying that only... A heart that is broken, a heart that accepts the fact that I have sinned, that I have wrong. A heart that accepts that I have been a sinner. And say, Father, I have sinned against you. That kind of heart, the Father will not reject. The Father will not forsake. The Father will not close his arm. His arms are open wide to that heart. Just acknowledge. Amen. What does that? What is our text saying? The, just as our text of today is saying, what does it say in the book of Luke 15? When you read 18 and 19, it says, The son said, I will arise and go to my father. And I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. And I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy highest seven. Listen, he humbled himself and even as you are you know you are a christian and you know that what you have done you are not worried to be called a christian that is a broken heart because you you are seeing yourself and you are broken and you, you feel like no you are not worried to be called a christian that is broken heart you have acknowledged the fact that you have seen just like the son acknowledge but do not only acknowledge after he acknowledged he went to the father come to the father don't sit there 
Come to the Father in prayers. Come to the Father in supplication. Speak to Him right now. Come to the Father. And do you know when you come to the Father with that heart? You know what the Father do? When the Father does see you, the Father will embrace you. He will welcome you. He will embrace you. And you know what He will do again? He will clot you. The Bible says, He will give you a white garment, the garment of righteousness. He will clot you in white. In righteousness shall you be clothed. Amen. Because the Father knows that without Him, you cannot do it. But with Him, you can do all things. He knows that you can do Him you can do it only through him you can overcome that sinful habit only through christ that strengthens you you can always overcome through christ that strengthens you you need the strength of god to overcome that challenge you need the strength of god to overcome that temptation you need the strength of god to overcome that persecution that's why you need to come to the father what does the book of hebrew 13 verse 5 says can we read the last part of Hebrews 13 verse 5? But I will focus on the last part. He says, let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as he have. For he had said, I will never leave you nor forsake thee. God said it. He will never leave you, not forsake him, not forsake you. Do you know why? Because the Bible tells us that he has made him. That is a book of 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21. He has made Jesus Christ sin for us. Who? Christ that knew no sin. That we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ. The righteousness of God in Christ. He made him sin. He who knew no sin. That we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ. Hallelujah. I just want you to know that God loves you and God will not forsake you the hands of our God are open wide and do you know what David said I want us to read the book of 2nd Samuel chapter 24 verse 14 you know after David numbered the people after he has numbered the people and he discovered that he has he has sinned against God there was a punishment that was to come and 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 in 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 the place of uh, in in the place of the punishment when the prophet God came, when the prophet God came, we are going to read it. Amen. So it's in Second Samuel twenty four. We we are going to read from verse from verse uh, from verse twelve so that we understand better. Now in from verse twelve it says, "Go and say unto David, Thus say the Lord, I offer thee three things." Choose thee one of them, that I may do it unto thee. So God said in verse 13, So God came to David and told him, and said unto him, Shall seven years of famine come unto thee in thy land? That is one. Or wilt thou flee, flee three months before thine enemies, while they pursue thee? Or that there be three days of pestilence in thy land, now advise and see what answer I shall return to him that sent me. And David said unto him, Listen, there are three things that were offered to David. Three things were offered to David. But in verse 14, this is what David says. I am in a great strength. Let us fall into the hand of the Lord. For his mercies are great. And let me not fall in the hand of man. Now listen to this. David knew God. David knew God. He knew the Father. David knew that he had sinned. But David said. They gave him three options. But David did not look at those three options. See, it doesn't matter what people say. is the punishment of what you have done. It may be that through all the way up and down you may have taken sickness you may have been sick because of that because of what you went into because of that you may have gotten tuberculosis whatever sickness you have gotten 
Daisy did not choose any punishment. And I am telling you today, it doesn't matter what people say is a punishment. But David said, let us fall into the heart of the Lord. For his loving kindness is great. But I will not fall in the hands of man. I want you to understand something. No matter how far you have gone, don't fall into the hand of men. What does that mean? Don't listen to what men are saying. They say it's finished for you. Your case is closed. No. Fall into the hands of the Father. Because the Father will not leave you. It doesn't matter even if you have you have been sick in that in that in that in that situation you have gotten uh, uh, some 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 things which are like like weighing you down come to the father it may be that due to due to the way you have gone far you are not able to find your your way back come to the father it doesn't matter come to the father the bible says in the book of proverbs 24 verse 15 to 16 i want us to read it proverbs 24 verse 15 to 16 say lay not wait o wicked man against the dwelling of the righteous spoil not his resting his resting place for a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again but the wicked shall fall into mischief what am i trying to say i'm talking to you you may have fallen but don't stay there how far you have fallen it doesn't matter how far you have gone deep into it don't stay there rise and come to the father rise up again rise up again and come to the father god loves you the Bible says in James 4 verse 7, Submit yourself therefore to God. Submit yourself to God. Render yourself to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. The question is how? How shall you resist the devil? How shall you submit yourself to God? Now you have to pray. You have to commit yourself to God. And as you commit yourself to God, just as the book of Joshua 1 it says it said the book of the law shall not depart out of thy mind you have to meditate you have to meditate through the scripture you have to pray you have to get up in prayer you have to meditate upon the word of God day and night which means all the time just as prayer is continuous so also meditation upon the word of God should be continuous and as I begin to pray now for you I am praying to you I believe that the Bible, I believe that wherever you are now, you have listened to the word of God and you feel that it's time for you to come to the Father. That it's time for you to run back to the Father. Wherever you are, lift up your hands and begin to speak to the Father right now. In the name of Jesus, begin to speak to the Father. It doesn't matter how far you have gone. It doesn't matter how deep you have fallen. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And the love of our Father is deeper. The love of our Father is wider. The love of our Father is greater. Just speak to Him right now. Lift up your hands and speak to Him right now. Father, I surrender. I acknowledge that I have fallen, O oh God. I acknowledge that I have sinned, O oh God. I don't want to be there. I don't want to stay there, O oh God. I don't want to stay in that situation anymore. I don't want to stay there, oh God. I have gone far away from your presence. I no longer meditate like before. I have gone far away in those devices. Father, here I am. Have mercy, oh God. Here I am, oh God. I don't want to do that any longer. I don't want to go back there. Fathers, I need you, God. Help me. Take away that lust. Take away that lust. 
take away that lust of the flesh. Take it away, O oh God. Take away that lust of the eyes. Take away that pride of life. Take it away, O oh God. Take it away. Take it away. Take it away. Oh God, take away everything that is taking me away from your presence. Anything that is driving me away, take away all these vices, oh God. All these vices, take them away from me, Father. Oh Jesus, all I want is you. I repent this day, oh God. Pray to God. Begin to pray to God and ask you. Begin to pray. The Bible say in the book of Psalms 107 and 20 that he sent forth his word and healed and delivered them from their destruction by the power of the Holy Ghost. Now, by the power of the Holy Ghost, as you begin to speak to God, I command the power of God to flow wherever you are. Wherever you are, let there be mercy. Let there be mercy. Let there be mercy. Let there be mercy. I want you to repeat, say, Lord Jesus, I surrender to you now. Just repeat after me, say, Lord Jesus, I surrender to you now. I accept that I have gone astray, O oh God. I accept that I thought I was in doing the right thing, but now I know I was wrong. Father, I am sorry. Say, so, Father, I repent. I accept that Jesus is Lord of my life. I declare that my life belongs to Jesus and to Jesus alone. I declare that my life belongs to God, the Father, the Father alone. I am no longer condemned. I am no longer condemned. I am forgiven. And today, I declare Jesus is Lord of my life. And today, I declare that I will never be the same again. By the Spirit of God, continue to repeat after me. By the Spirit of God, I am walking in righteousness. By the Spirit of God, I am walking in liberty. Through Christ, that strengthens me. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. As you are repeating the power of God, I begin to command now the power of God to meet you right, right where you are. Let the power of God flow right now. Let the power of God flow right now. Let the power of God flow right now. The power of the Holy Ghost move right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I rebuke any spirit of killing. I rebuke any spirit of stealing. I rebuke any spirit of destruction. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out in Jesus' name. You sinful habit, I rebuke you right now. Come out of your body. Come out of your life in Jesus' name. You spirit of lust, come out. I command you, loose your grip from your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Lust of the flesh, come out. Lust of the eyes, come out in the name of Jesus Christ. I rebuke you, Satan, in Jesus' name. Pride of life, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare them free by the power of the Holy Ghost. Be free right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Receive your freedom right now. Receive your freedom right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. That power of the Holy Ghost. Oh, thank you, Father. There is a fresh release right now. As I pray for you, I pray for the grace to stand. The grace to stand. And the grace never to give up. The grace to persevere. In righteousness. The grace to persevere. In truth. The grace to persevere. In the way which is Christ. The way to persevere. In righteousness. In holiness. In Jesus name. Let it flow now. That grace. Let it flow. For I am what I am. By the grace of God. 
Thank you, Father. As, as, I, as I was praying, God is asking me to pray for a child. I don't know which is that child, but it is a child that is sick. God is asking me to pray for that child right now. And as I lay hand on my head, I command by the power of the Holy Ghost, the healing power of God to flow over that child right now. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. In the mighty name of Jesus, the power of healing now. Let it flow. From the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. Be healed. I lay my hand on my heart. I don't know if he has a heart problem or whatever he's going through, but I command now the healing power of God to flow right now. Pee. Pee. Is it between life and death? I say be healed. Receive life right now in the name of Jesus. Receive life right now in the name of Jesus. Receive life in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. No, I want to hear that testimony. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. We declare you free in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Are you happy to be in the presence of God? Amen. 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 God bless you. Stay blessed. In Jesus' name.